My younger brother Peter and I were such different people that I did not realize how much I loved him until he died in August after a brief illness. Except for some facial resemblances, we were different in almost every way. Personality, athleticism, social and community engagement, political leanings, truly every way. Peter and I were as different as night is today. When I was four and he was two and a half, Peter passed me in height, and he went on to grow to six feet four inches, where I barely made it to 5'10". His was an exceptional athlete. He earned 16 varsity letters while in high school and played both football and basketball at the University of North Carolina. While my hand-eye coordination was so abysmal that the only sport that I could excel at was track. Peter was excellent at taking naps while I never missed a good party. Peter was a good Bush Republican and I was a social justice activist. He became a master gardener while I purchased cut flowers that are already arranged. Peter was stoic, while I was known to be excitable and emotional. We had little in common. I confess that my brother and I were not very close, even though both of us raised our families in Richmond and were active in our respective churches. So I was surprised by the sudden outpouring of love I felt for Peter when I visited him in the hospital ICU while he was dying. Seeing him in such a diminished state, with sunken cheeks, gray stubble on his jaw, and his long, lithe body unable to move, gave me a deep pain of regret for not having spent more time with Peter over the years. But now it was too late for me to do more than say goodbye by kissing his cheek and whispering, I love you. To my surprise and delight, he responded with a guttural, unintelligible sound that I knew was his effort to express his love in return. The gospel this morning concluded, all who humble themselves will be exalted. And that was Peter. At the reception following his funeral, a member of St. Michael's, Peter's church in Bonaire, told me that no one in that parish knew that Peter had been a star athlete in college until they heard the eulogy offered by one of his teammate, football teammates from 55 years before. And they saw a large group of others dressed in Carolina blue who had come to honor their quiet teammate. Members of his church knew Peter for his 30 years of training acolytes and for his volunteer work through the church. But Peter was too humble to talk about his exploits. Instead, he listened to others with a compassionate heart and served when he saw a need. Today, the church celebrates All Saints Sunday. The Episcopal Church recognizes 232 saints and over the past 1,700 years, the Catholic Church has canonized more than 10,000 individuals deemed to have lived heroically virtuous lives. But God welcomes all saints as saints in eternal life, all those who have gone before, whether they're designated as such by the Church or not. 
Today, we're honoring our saints, those we love who have joined the communion of faithful departed. I count my humble but capable brother among the saints we honor today. And I have no doubt that each of you has family members, friends, and others you love who have died and live in God's eternal kingdom. These are the saints we love and remember today. In the words of St. Paul, in Christ we are one body made holy, good, and whole. So I invite you to sit as one body in the silence that will follow and give God thanks for the lives of the saints you love.